Hello, everyone, and welcome to Center for Student Opportunity, and I'm first webinar, The Benefits of College Partnership. We are very excited to have you guys in attendance uh, to hear more about what Center for Student Opportunity is doing and what the I'm First initiative is all about. Uh, I'm joined by our executive director, Matt Rubinoff, uh, who will start us off. Thanks, Krista, and, and thanks, everybody, for, for taking time from your busy schedules to, to join us today. We're, we're really uh, excited to share with you more about uh, the Center for Student Opportunity Program, our, our new I'm First initiative, and, and how we're partnering with four-year colleges and universities across the country in support of our shared mission uh, to empower first-generation college students uh, to and through college. Uh, we started CSO uh, close to seven years ago now uh, with, with one real focus uh, or, or need that, that we had identified, and, and that was that, that the popular tools for college search weren't really cutting it for uh, aspiring first-generation college students. Um, you know, we saw uh, popular college search websites and college guidebooks time and time again talk in more general terms about, uh, about institutions, uh, about the leafy green campuses and the Gothic architecture, and, and present the general admissions information and, and fast facts, but weren't really tailoring the information or, or the experience uh, um, to the unique needs and interests of the first generation college students um, in the process. At the same time, we knew that Many colleges and universities care about first-gen students, uh, offer great programs and opportunities and services on their campus to serve and support this population. Um, but unfortunately, uh, you know, these students who come into the college process uh, at a disadvantage, not having parents who went through the process often in schools and in communities uh, where college counseling is, is, is little to, to non-existent, uh, while, while, while they want to go to college and, and are motivated to pursue college, what college means to them is often limited in scope. Uh, and so our efforts are really geared to helping uh, illuminate for students and their supporters that the opportunity for college does exist for first generation college students and there are uh, great institutions and opportunities uh, with, with programs uh, geared to supporting them not only in, in accessing college, but, but persisting and, and graduating once they get there. Uh, when we started the organization, we, we built a website at the time called CSO College Center um, to serve as a, uh, as, a, as a college search tool, um, again, with that unique focus on the first-gen student, um, and, and would highlight uh, uh, colleges and universities in light of their important programs and, and services on campus. Um, while it's been a successful program for us, what we learned very quickly, um, especially after introducing our scholarship program and, and the student blog, was how important the near peer influence uh, is for motivating and encouraging students uh, to pursue college, especially uh, aspiring first generation college students who are hungry for information and advice and, and, and role models, really, uh, from those who have come before them. Uh, and, and that near-peer influence um, being so critical. Uh, when we introduced the student blog to CSO College Center, very quickly that is where the attention turned um, and, uh, and, and where students wanted to, to learn and go when they came to our website. Uh, with that lesson and hearing similar sentiments from uh, community-based organizations and college access programs across the country, and also with a little bit of inspiration from the It Gets Better project, uh, which you might have heard about in the news over the past couple years, um, doing some tremendous work with YouTube-generated uh, videos um, that address the, the LGBT teen uh, population. Uh, and the, the amazing impact that they've had in their work. Uh, we, about a year, a little over a year ago at this point, uh, conceived and uh, conceived what has now become the I'm First project and, and began a rebranding uh, process and an and upgrade of our online programs and presence uh, under the I'm First banner. 
a few months ago, we beta launched the I'm First storytelling project, what you see now live when you go to imfirst.org. In a nutshell, we are uh, launching a, a national campaign to, to put a face on who are first generation college students, um, give them a voice uh, as well, and, 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 and help inspire the next generation of students who are going to be first. So we put this site live um, in a soft launch uh, and, and really done little to no marketing at this point, uh, but, but wanted to kind of see how, how the site would would, would grow organically um, uh, initially, uh, and, and it's been received uh, um, uh, fairly well. Uh, we have not only um, our community of college partners helping to contribute stories to the site from their uh, from their campus communities, but but even beyond that, uh, we're we're at, we're reaching uh, first gen college graduates and, and students who will be uh, to. Uh, yeah, to, to, to check out what's going on here, to, to join our efforts to take the pledge and share their stories. Um, I implore you guys to, um, to, to kick around uh, the imfirst.org website when you have a chance. Unfortunately, the, um, the limitations of GoToWebinar aren't going to allow us to stream a video. Uh, the audio wouldn't translate for you guys uh, in the audience. Um, but you can see here the, the call to action is, is taking the pledge and, and also sharing your story. Uh, we hope that you'll share this opportunity with, um, with uh, um, your current first-gen student body as well as alumni and any faculty and staff on your campus who might be first-generation college um, and, uh, and invite them to contribute uh, to this campaign uh, as it grows. We, um, uh, yeah, I guess, you know, uh, the, the page that, that Krista is, is sharing with you um, is the Share Your Video Story page with some good tips and instructions for creating uh, an on first video. They're meant to be uh, user-created, um, three minutes or less, uh, basically the individual in front of their webcam or, or with their smartphone device can, can record a video. Uh, with the, the simple introduction and, and proclamation that I'm Matt and I'm first, and, and then uh, go on to share a little bit about their personal story and give some uh, advice or a lesson that they learned uh, along the way to, uh, to, to the younger students who are, are watching these videos. Um, after recording the video, simply post it to YouTube and, and provide us with that YouTube link, uh, and we'll add it to the site. Um, so hopefully uh, you guys, um, you know, independent of, of your intentions to, to partner with us uh, under the College Partner Program, uh, will help uh, share this, this effort um, with your campus communities and, and rally support from the first generation population on your campus uh, to, to contribute to, to this effort. Um, obviously, uh, you know, kids are coming to our website not only to watch these videos and, and find some motivation and inspiration from them, uh, but, um, but, but there's, there's more tangible steps uh, to navigating the college process and, and preparing for college as well as uh, you know, researching and connecting with, with colleges. And so in development now uh, with the support of a a grant uh, from the co uh, called the College Knowledge Challenge, a Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation uh, supported grant. Um, we are developing the I'm First dashboard, uh, a place where students can come to build a profile, research and connect with colleges, get answers to their questions, um, and, and just really building this community of support uh, for first generation colleges. Uh, college students. Um, I guess to, to kind of connect the dots a little bit, you know, we have over the years been uh, building a, a college partnership program um, of our own where we are able to, to support colleges and universities to not only better promote your institution and your efforts to serve first generation college students, um, but to help strengthen your efforts in, in outreach and recruitment and retention of these students uh, as well. 
And our online presence and programs is, is a big part of that, uh, that partnership program. Uh, so we are excited to kind of share with you uh, the I'm First dashboard experience for our college partners and help you uh, understand what, uh, what that looks like and, and, and the, the benefits and services that that, that provides. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Krista who will be able to walk you through uh, the I'm First website and dashboard in a little bit more detail, showcase some of the, the opportunities it, it offers for uh, for, for college partners, um, and then I'll come back in after that and, and touch on a few of the other uh, areas um, uh, of the college partnership and, and how we're working with, with institutions. Um, we're going to try to answer as many questions uh, as we can over the course of this hour. Um, you're welcome to please at any, any time uh, um, type in uh, questions that you have in your questions box. Um, and we'll, we'll take some time uh, towards the end to address um, as many of those questions as we can. Um, so hopefully uh, that um, sets the table nicely for the rest of this presentation, um, gives you a, a, a brief um, background history and context for, for our organization and, and, and how we've come to, uh, to, to the I'm First project now. And uh, with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Krista. Thank you, Matt, and thank you, uh, everyone, again, for being in attendance with us this afternoon. So as Matt was mentioning, uh, partnering with Center for Student Opportunity and I'm First is an opportunity for your institution to directly reach motivated students while also building an awareness of your institution and the programs that you're offering for first-generation college students. And so the I'm First storytelling project that you saw on the main page is just one component for students to help them become motivated and uh, gain the courage to pursue college. But to help uh, make these steps easier for them, we've developed the I'm First dashboard for students and also for college partners. And so through a college partner user account that you receive uh, by partnering with us, you have access to this dashboard. So I'm going to log in using a dummy account that we've set up to give you a better sense of the features we've created in this dashboard. So as you can see here on the main dashboard page, we have important highlighted activity and metrics that help you better manage your partnership. And so in the orange writing, you can see a number associated with profile views, a number associated with organizations, and then numbers associated with student interest. The profile views give you an understanding of how many students are viewing your institution's profile through I'm First. The total number you see for organizations is the total number of community-based organizations, college access programs, and other youth-serving organizations that we've built into an organization directory for our college partners to be able to access. And then those students interested is a component that we've built in for students to help uh, directly connect with you. When they come across your institution's page, they're able to show interest. And what that does is it releases their information to be sent over for you so that you're able to directly export it. And so the number that you see presented is the number of students who have shown interest out of the total number of students who are uh, currently have a user account on I'm First. We also have a news feed, and this would be of information that has been constantly updated to the profile or any of your activities, such as saved information. And so I'm going to briefly show you what a college partner profile looks like. So here you can see uh, a dummy profile that we've created for the purpose of this presentation. Uh, AAA CSO University contains uh, relevant information that's uh, of importance to students. And what's unique about the profiles that we highlight through I'm First is that Along with your institution, we're highlighting those programs specifically for first-generation college students that's going to help make them successful for graduation. So here you see in the purple writing, and I'll drop down a few boxes, examples of what those programs would be. 
And along with these descriptions, you're given the ability to directly link your institution's homepage to these programs. So for instance, under scholarship and financial aid, if a student wanted to learn more about those opportunities, it would directly connect to the information presented for your institution. And here we just connected it to the uh, I'm First scholarship that Matt briefly mentioned in the introduction that Center for Student Opportunity gives to current first generation students. And so the layout of the profile is customized to what's of interest to the first generation population we serve. Uh, on the left, you can see statistical view of, of figures that would be of importance to first gens as they're making their decision about college. Uh, such st statistical highlights will include student body demographics, retention and graduation rates, and affordability metrics. And students can click on more facts to get a better, uh, bigger picture of what these percentages look like. And here I threw in uh, some metrics for the purpose of this presentation. And so on on first, we really want students to be in the driver's seat with their college search process to, to ask with a lens of what's in it for me as a first generation college student. And what you can't see here on the, uh, the dummy page is a green button that would say I'm interested. Uh, it would be located next to the metrics of website, save and share. Uh, and students simply are able to click on that I'm interested button to have that information then be sent over for you to export their contact information to be able to reach out for, to them in a manner that is convenient for your institution. We've also incorporated other features for our full uh, college partners to help them uh, have a further reach of the students that that they're uh, wanting to connect with. Um, so we, we don't want our partners to just wait for students to uh, come to them. We want our college partners to use I'm First um, to directly search and reach motivated uh, first generation students. So what we've done was we incorporated a student database for our college partners to be able to search all of the student users that we have registered under I'm First. And so I will do uh, a quick search of what uh, a student's profile looks like. And for the purpose of this demonstration, we've uh, developed this student profile to contain uh, the majority of information that we ask from students. Um, right now, we just opened up the sign up feature for students to be able to register under I'm First. Um, so the number that we have for students is uh, continuing to grow. So here we have uh, Annie G. And we ask for information from students that uh, they give permission to release, such as extracurricular and activities, their work experience, honors and awards, and their academic interests. Uh, here you can see the contact information that we collect, uh, the student's home address, as well as a phone number, and other demographic information, such as their birth date, uh, their ethnicity, and then we ask for their household income. On the right-hand side, you can see where this student attends high school currently, uh, what their graduating class is, and then if they fill in other relevant information, such as their class rank, uh, what they receive for a high school GPA, what they receive on their SAT and ACT score, to give our college partners uh, a better sense of the students uh, that they are searching for. And so here you can see on the left-hand side underneath Annie's picture, a green button message and then a red heart with uh, the word save. And so we're uh, allowing our college partners to be able to contact these students by directly messaging them through the I'm First dashboard. And this information is sent to uh, those students' home page, similar to Facebook messaging. And so uh, this allows our college partners to be able to further connect to those students. The red save button allows you to, when you're conducting searches of students, to save them. That information is then brought back to your main dashboard page that we saw in the beginning. And you will be able to export those saved students um, out of I'm First into Excel to be able to further uh, contact them in a, in a manner that's convenient for your institution. And so as I mentioned, we just opened up the, the sign-in for students. 
And so uh, we're with the, the grant that Matt uh, briefly mentioned, we are going to be able to not only utilize I'm First and, and the, the, the mechanisms that we're uh, conducting here at CSO to reach these students, but also uh, be able to really utilize the social network moving forward to reach students where they're at. And so furthermore, over the years, um, we've learned that college partners establishing relationships with community-based organizations and college access programs, as well as other youth-serving organizations, is cr increasingly becoming a best practice. And so uh, with the I'm First dashboard, we're very excited to also move the national directory of these organizations that we've been building for, over the past few years um, to, uh, to make that directory accessible for our full, uh, college partners to also be able to search and utilize to reach highly motivated first-generation students who otherwise aren't being supported um, you know, by their high schools and obviously um, at home because they are themselves going through this process for the first time. And so our uh, organization directory has been built through our collaboration and partnerships with um, other organizations and associations such as the National College Access Network and National Partnership for Educational Access. Uh, here at Center for Student Opportunity, we're also uh, in, endorsed and work with Teach for America and America's Promise Alliance. And we're also, uh, we also include um, charter school networks that conduct college prep work uh, to serve low-income students such as KIPP and the Chris O'Reilly Network. And so this directory that you see here is also searchable. Um, like the student database was, uh, based upon a set criteria of interest, one being you know, a state uh, where these organizations are reaching out to, uh, as well as the program uh, services that they provide and the population served. And so I will do uh, a, a search here to give you a sense of what these profiles look like. And so here you can see with uh, the organization, the ACT-6 Leadership and Scholarship Initiative. Uh, this is an extensively built out profile uh, that uh, I'm showing you for the purpose of this demonstration. Uh, currently, the profiles um, that are in here for the directory uh, contains basic information, and we are in the process of asking these different organizations to uh, beef up their profiles to include more information. But what you'll be able to get, gain access to uh, through our directory is not only uh, an elongated description of what this organization does and, and their mission, um, but also, again, highlights of the populations that they serve, the programs that they offer, as well as when they offer services. And utilizing this directory, we're giving our college partners the ability to also reach out to the main points of contact that we have uh, for these organizations. So here on the bottom of the screen, you can see uh, links to that organization's website, their home phone number, as well as the opportunity uh, to save this organization and then share it through social media. And so here you can see two points of contact. And utilizing I'm First by pressing this contact button, you'll be able to send these individuals an email. And so you, uh, for the purpose of this demonstration, my, my email is not synced <laughs> to this page. But simply by pressing this, and you'll be able to compose an email. Uh, it's also, uh, I would also like to point out that um, the address here is linked to Google Maps. Uh, this is a similar feature on your institution's page. And so here it'll bring you to the address of the organization. And for your institution's page, it would bring you, uh, the student to the address of your admissions office. Krista, I'd, I'd just like to chime in here and really uh, drive home this point about uh, building relationships with community-based organizations and, and college access programs. Uh, we have kind of provided this, this service to our college partners for several years now, but it's been offline. Um, colleges in, in planning their travels have, have, have increasingly expressed uh, a, a need and an interest to better build relationships with these organizations in their recruitment efforts. That it's no longer enough to, uh, to, to just be visiting the high schools, especially as it concerns your diversity recruitment agenda and, and attracting first generation college students. Um, oftentimes it's not the high schools that these students are in, 
that are really serving them in their pursuit of college. Uh, more and more we're seeing these, uh, the, these nonprofit programs and community-based organizations uh, pick up the slack where high schools are falling short and are, are places where colleges should be turning to uh, in, in your outreach and recruitment efforts uh, if you're not already. And so over the years, we, we've, we've been building this, this directory and, and fielding requests from our college partners as they're planning their travels to say, hey, we're going to this city or we're going to this state. Who are the good programs there? Who should we be in touch with? And we've been able to, to provide those lists of contacts and, and make introductions where and when appropriate. Um, we're really excited to now be moving this directory online as part of the I'm First uh, website and uh, providing our college partners with direct access to it. Um, I think it's, you know, it, 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 it's unfortunately, you know, not something we can mandate of you guys, uh, but certainly strongly encourage that if you're not already um, making this a priority for your uh, admissions and recruitment efforts, uh, that, that you should begin to institutionalize this as a best practice. Um, any, on any travel that uh, an admissions rep is, is making, they should be seeing one, if not a few, community-based organizations and college access programs in addition to their regular high school visits. And sometimes institutions are maybe apprehensive to, to make this a requirement, knowing that sometimes these, uh, these places are hard to find or hard to establish uh, a contact with, um, but the partnership with CSO and I'm First maybe makes that mandate a, a little bit easier. Um, you can now kind of require this of your admissions reps um, that we're making this an institutional priority, um, and we're not just sending you out on your own to find uh, these organizations and these programs, uh, but we have a partnership um, and an online directory through I'm First that provides us a, a place where we can turn to research these programs and, uh, and, and contact them directly. Uh, so again, it's, you know, it's increasingly um, becoming a, a priority and a best practice for, for institutions to think in these terms um, beyond just identifying and meeting with them. Uh, kind of the next, the next step that we're now seeing um, institutions uh, take is, is developing MOUs, memorandums of understanding with these organizations. Um, it's a topic we're still learning about and, and, and pulling uh, some, some, uh, some intelligence, I guess, from our, our college partners and our CBO relationships who have been forerunners in this space. Um, I'm actually moderating a panel at the NACAC conference this fall precisely on, on this topic. So uh, a lot more to learn uh, in this area, um, but, but definitely a huge value add of the partnership has been and will continue to be how we're able to facilitate uh, a greater awareness um, and, uh, and, and, uh, and, co and connections between colleges and CBOs. Great, thank you, Matt. And so, again, also to uh, reiterate, the information that you're able to obtain here through I'm First, whether it be a student contact or a community-based organization or college access program organization contact from the directory, these items, as you can see on the main dashboard, can all be saved, and the students will be exportable. And so I just wanted to show you really quickly where that is. In addition to the students database and the organization directory that we've built, we've also added uh, two, two other features to help students be able to connect with our college partner institutions, as well as get questions that they have about the college uh, application process or just anything uh, regarding it in general, uh, to be a source for them to go to to have those questions asked and answered. So here at, uh, on the I'm First dashboard, we've built this question and answers platform. Uh, as you can see, where students are able to submit those questions that they have. And so uh, it is filterable by category, as you can see on the left-hand side. And uh, while we don't require our college partners to monitor these questions and submit answers, we really encourage them to be active participants in doing so. Uh, here at CSO, uh, we as staff are, are constantly monitoring them and answering them. But uh, if an institution is so inclined uh, to also uh, connect to these students, 
through this platform, uh, we encourage them to do so. And for the purpose of this demonstration, I'll just bring up a quick uh, question so you can see how you're able to answer. And then the last component of the I'm for Dashboard is student blog. And so we're really excited about this blog because currently we have 30 bloggers, uh, all of the scholarship recipient uh, are here at Center for Student Opportunity. So those have the privilege of serving as uh, centers on the website, a good uh, way to have students be able to track their experiences as a first generation student. And so here you can see an example of one of our students who is blogging for us. Her name is Naomi. And we allow students to get as creative as they want when posting their blog. So here you can see Naomi was able to embed a video. And again, we're really excited about this because it's going to be a good documentation of first generation students and their experiences uh, as they go through college. Um, also, so that uh, they can become uh, mentors going further for the incoming cohort of first-generation students that will be continuously serving. And so uh, being, a, being a college partner, uh, you also become a part of our community of college partners where uh, we really want to be able to promote uh, best practices uh, amongst our, our community of college partners uh, to really enhance this, the, the services that we're providing for the first generation college students that we assist. And so I'm going to turn it back over to Matt uh, to give you an uh, overview of the other benefits that a partnership with Center for Student Opportunity and I'm First entails. Thanks, Krista. Um, yeah, the, the I'm First project and our online uh, programs are, are certainly a, a driving force behind our, our college partnerships and, and ways we're able to support uh, you guys in, in, in both the promotion of, of your institutions and, and your efforts to, to recruit uh, students to your campus. Um, but at the same time, uh, it, that's just the tip of the iceberg, and we're able to, to work with colleges and universities in, in some more strategic and, and collaborative ways um, to both support your recruitment agendas as, as well as your retention efforts. Um, and so I wanted to, to touch on a, a few of those uh, um, pieces of the puzzle as well. Um, we, we've alluded to uh, the student blog and our scholarship. Um, just to clarify that point, um, our scholarship uh, is reserved for first-generation college students who, who are matriculating to a CSO partner institution. Um, so another value add of partnership certainly is if, if one of your matriculating freshmen wins our scholarship, um, they become a blogger on our website and are able to chronicle uh, their college experiences and, and give advice to, to younger students who are using our site. Um, and that student blog has been uh, received tremendously well and, and as I mentioned, um, has, uh, um, uh, has in, in a lot of ways inspired uh, this new I'm First initiative. The, um, uh, the, the scholarship uh, is, is, is selective. Obviously, we're not able to fund scholarships to every student who comes to I'm First, um, but we are funded by a, a foundation grant to give away eight scholarships a year. Um, again, the two prerequisites being uh, that they are first-generation college students um, and they're attending one of our partner institutions. So if you guys um, uh, engage your institution uh, in our partnership, we'd love to to work with you to, to share the scholarship opportunity with your incoming students and, and would hope that, that, that you guys can call uh, one of our future winners and bloggers uh, one of your own. Um, one, uh, one question we, uh, we get asked a lot and, and I'm sure is at the forefront of many of your minds is, you know, all of this sounds great and, and well, but how are you um, sharing this with students and, and, and those who are supporting students, uh, their, their, their high school counselors, their college access programs, um, and, uh, and obviously that's important, an important question. Uh, we know that it's not, if you build it, they will come. Uh, and we do a lot of outreach and marketing, uh, um, mainly through uh, email newsletters. Uh, we have 
uh, about 40,000 email newsletter subscribers um, who receive our monthly Opportunity Knox newsletter and, and other uh, email communications that we send out. Um, this is another value add of, of the partnership because the Opportunity Knox newsletter, each issue features uh, a group of our college partners and a, uh, an, a unique or innovative program that they offer uh, that, that serves first generation students. So you can see uh, Krista um, sharing with you now uh, a, a recent uh, edition of our Opportunity Knox newsletter that looks at uh, peer mentoring programs on our partner uh, college campuses. Um, so again, we, uh, we send this newsletter out uh, widely and is a way for us to draw um, students and supporters uh, into our program. Um, beyond that, we're, we're continuing to uh, find ways to meet students where they are, um, and that, that where they are largely is social media. So we've really made an effort to increase our presence and our activity on Twitter and Facebook and Tumblr, and those have been great tools for us to uh, engage students in our programs and bring them to on first. Um, we also are a Google grant uh, winner, so we have free advertising on Google, um, and as, uh, the, you know, it's a powerful tool, as you guys know, and, and, and brings a lot of traffic to our site just simply from people Google searching keywords like scholarships or first generation college. Um, uh, our, our website comes, uh, comes up at the top of those search results. Um, more and more, we're looking for creative ways to engage our partners um, in our outreach. So uh, we are looking uh, at you know how we can call on you guys to help ensure that um, that we uh, that we're reaching uh, students and schools from your traditional recruitment geographies. Um, one way we've already had success in that area is through uh, our guidebook initiative and its free distribution. So in addition to our, our online um, programs, uh, we publish a, a print guidebook um, currently called the College Access and Opportunity Guide. The next edition that we publish this fall will be rebranded under the I'm First name, so we'll likely begin calling it the I'm First Guide to College. Um, but a few years into our work, we, uh, we began to get requests um, largely from the counselor community, but, but to some extent from colleges as well, um, indicating to us that they, they, they felt that there was still value in, in the print resource, um, uh, kind of the tangible nature that, that a printed college guidebook lends to, uh, to, to the, their counseling efforts as well as to the credibility uh, of our work. And, and so uh, in 2008, we published the first College Access and Opportunity Guide and updated it annually. Um, similar to the college profile on I'm First, our college partners have a one-page um, profile in the guidebook uh, that uniquely focuses on uh, those important programs and services on campus. Um, Krista, do you want to click over to uh, the, the college profile page just to give uh, these guys a, a peek at what that looks like? Again, it includes you know the the similar program descriptions and presentation of the facts and figures, but it's 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 uh, compiled on into a a one page um, uh, a one page profile uh, as you see there, and the guidebook is distributed nationally to high schools and 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 CBOs. Um, in part, that distribution is sponsored by our college partners. Um, you guys are able to identify a, a list of low-income serving high schools and, and community-based organizations that you want to make sure receive a copy of the guidebook on your behalf. Um, so that has been a strategic way that we're able to ensure uh, these tools and our programs reach, uh, reach the schools and the students um, that you traditionally recruit from. Uh, beyond that, the guidebook is, uh, is distributed through um, foundation grants that we try to raise money uh, to support, as well as um, through sales. Um, we're not selling it to students and families, 
uh, but where and when we are selling it, it's to schools and school districts and organizations because we know that our free distribution isn't reaching everywhere. Um, and, and, uh, and even those who do receive one of the free copies, um, oftentimes they're interested in procuring more for their office or, or to give away to students um, to, to have their own copies. Um, so it's been uh, a very successful um, uh, initiative for us uh, and we'll, we'll continue to, to update the publication every year. Um, it, it publishes in, a, in the August-September time frame and uh, for schools to be included in the next edition of the guidebook, um, we're requesting that they initiate their partnership um, on or before June 1st of this year. Uh, we're, we're proud to say that, that since 2008 we've, we've been able to distribute over 20,000 copies of the guidebook um, and, uh, and, and con continue to see that number grow. Um, as well as this year, we're going to be looking at uh, possibly making a, an ebook version uh, available as well, um, kind of a, a hybrid, I guess, between the college search tool on I'm First and the print publication. Um, but, but as uh, tablet devices and smartphones become uh, more prevalent, even among the low-income first-generation uh, population, uh, we're, we're going to be looking at, at the potential for for doing the guidebook in an ebook format. Um, the last kind of component of our college partnership program is, as, as Krista alluded to, this learning community that we've, uh, that we've been building. Uh, one of the unique uh, aspects of being a CSO and I'm First College partner is just this opportunity to be part of, uh, of a network of institutions that are similarly committed to serving and supporting first-generation college students. And we want to help facilitate opportunities for schools to learn from one another. Um, you know, we don't often take, take the time to step back and, and look at what's going on on other campuses, um, our, our peer institutions, uh, even sometimes our closest competitors, and really understand and evaluate what they're doing that might be working, where there are innovative approaches, or successful models that you could bring to your own campus um, to, to grow and improve your efforts. And so we've implemented a, a best practices webinar series. Um, going forward, we're going to try to host these quarterly, um, but the, the, the webinars uh, allow us to take a focus on a, a niche topic, whether that's how we're partnering with CBOs or peer mentoring programs or, uh, or multicultural fly-in and visit programs. Um, no matter the topic, what we're doing is identifying a panel of our college partners that excel in that particular discipline and have model programs that they are invited to share with our collective uh, community of college partners. Um, so this, this exchange of information and ideas um, ha has been uh, received very well by our community and those who are doing uh, good work in a, in a particular discipline are always eager to share uh, on what they're doing uh, with, um, with, with, with their peers who, who are part of our program. Uh, so definitely another value add of partnership to consider. We're always asking our college partners for ideas or requests on what topics they're interested in or would like to present on. Um, and so uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, our, our, we'll keep our editorial calendar somewhat flexible um, to respond to the, the needs and requests of our college partners. Um, beyond the webinars, uh, we're looking to uh, start publishing uh, white papers um, out of these, these webinars. Uh, so that um, there's some documentation for the ideas and best practices um, that, that we cover. Uh, we are hosting um, uh, live Google Plus Hangouts, um, primarily focused on our student population. Um, in January, we hosted a Google Hangout uh, on FAFSA um, and, uh, and one shortly thereafter on scholarships. 
um, but we're going to be looking at ways to, to engage our, our college partners as well in that Hangout series and maybe uh, do some Hangouts for students that look at um, uh, different, different cohorts of institutions or sectors, um, uh, public institutions or, or Catholic colleges or all women's colleges and, uh, and, 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 and offer uh, these types of opportunities for our students and colleges alike. Um, and, uh, and, and we're also researching um, ways that we can maybe build uh, build listservs or, or special interest groups uh, among our college partners. We know that sometimes a slippery slope and we, we want these to be effective tools, not tools that are going to flood your inbox or, 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 or overwhelm. Um, but we've had requests from schools to, to look at how we might be able to open up the dialogue on a more frequent and regular basis among our community of college partners. So we'll be looking at, uh, at those types of ways to, to further uh, engage our, our, our partnership and, and build out this learning community. I think that, I think that covers most of the bases. Um, uh, the page that we have um, shown right here is where you can reference for more information about the, the college partnership. Um, there's a, a brochure that, that you can download, a, a list of our current college uh, and university partners, as well as a link to our online college partnership agreement. Um, I'm sure one of the questions that you guys have is, is regarding the, uh, the business proposition, I guess, and, 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 and the costs. Um, we are a nonprofit organization, um, but we are supported uh, by contributions from our colleges and universities. Um, the, the, the annual partnership contribution that institutions fulfill goes a long way to helping us uh, do what we do, uh, operating our website, marketing our website, uh, publishing and distributing our guidebook. Um, so we, we really appreciate uh, the, the support that we're able to get from our college partners. Uh, there are two levels of partnership. The full partner uh, level includes the whole kit and caboodle, everything that we've uh, kind of touched on today, and comes with a, a recommended partnership contribution of $2,800. Um, and the associate level partnership is uh, a school who may want to get a foot in the door or dip their toe in the water, um, or, or maybe their interest is more just kind of the advertising uh, aspects of what we're doing. Um, the associate partnership uh, contribution is $1,500 and is limited uh, to uh, simply a profile in the guidebook and the profile presence uh, on our website as well. Uh, many of the other more strategic and collaborative ways that we're supporting our partners um, are reserved for our full partners. Um, now it is a great time for schools to be initiating their involvement with I'm First uh, and CSO as, as we're rolling out the I'm First initiative um, and, and with support from uh, the Gates Foundation. We are, are building up towards a, a national launch event in September um, and a lot of good PR and media uh, that is going to happen with it. Uh, so um, we're, we're inviting and welcoming new schools into our partnership um, uh, now uh, as, as we look towards a, a real strong 2013-14 uh, school year. Um, also with the timeline of our guidebook, uh, I mentioned before that the, the cutoff deadline for, for schools to initiate their partnership and ensure inclusion uh, in the um, uh, in the book is June 1st. Um, so we're able to ensure that any partner that, that joins uh, before June 1st will have a profile in the book. A lot of that work happens over the summer and we go to print in, in August uh, and, and books are on the street, uh, so to speak, in, in September. Um, the, the last thing I'll mention there too is um, the, the option to defer payment uh, to the new fiscal year. So while we have that June 1st deadline and, and are encouraging schools to, to initiate the partnership as soon as possible, 
um, for for schools with with sensitivity to your fiscal calendar, you'll see as you complete the college partner agreement the option to pay on the new fiscal year. Um, so uh, so that that very much is an option and something we're we're sensitive to. Um, I think I'll pause there and hopefully you guys have been submitting some questions uh, and I'll turn it back over to Krista um, to address uh, a few of those. Great, thank you Matt. And so we do have a couple of questions uh, coming in. And so we have about 10 minutes left of the presentation. Uh, one of the questions asked was, uh, would students be able to connect to other students using this? And I brought you back to the dashboard because while students don't have the uh, capability to directly message uh, each other, uh, like uh, our college partners do, uh, have the ability to message these students through the question and answer platform and then also the student blog, uh, students will be able to uh, connect to each other uh, through this way by answering each other's questions and then also commenting on uh, student blog posts. Yeah, I think one of the the objectives with the I'm First uh, web application is to really build a community of support for first generation college students. So uh, we expect to see the the Q and A area um, become a, a vibrant uh, community where students want to come to ask questions, to get answers to their questions, to give answers to other students' questions. Um, and, and really be a, a place um, to turn uh, for first-generation college students who um, may not be getting answers to their questions from their high school or, or elsewhere. Um, so, uh, yeah, good question. I appreciate that. Great. Another question uh, asked is, how do we select scholarship recipients? Uh, the CSO scholarship is open to graduating high school seniors who are classified as first-generation. Uh, here at CSO, we define a first-generation student as neither parent holding a four-year degree. Those students must be matriculating into one of our college partner institutions. So right now, we have about 165 of those college partner institutions. And while uh, it is not uh, merit-based or need-based, um, students do sub submit an application. We expect a range of 100, uh, 800 to 1,000. And then at, here at CSO, we evaluate each of those um, student applications based upon a number of criteria. Um, I'll, I'll just add to that, Krista, that um, you know, our scholarship is competitive, but it's not based on uh, academic qualifications. Our application doesn't even look at GPA or test scores. We're more interested in uh, students that have a story to tell and want to be spokespeople and role models for the first generation college student because obviously a significant uh, opportunity with the scholarship is to become a blogger on our website and we want these, uh, these students to, to really be advocates for the first generation cause um, and so the, the application is really geared at, at, uh, at kind of asking students to tell their story and communicate how and why they want to uh, you know, advocate on behalf of first-generation college students. Great. And then another question asked is, how do we get students to sign up to ARM First? Uh, this is a common question asked amongst many of our, our college partners and prospective college partners. Uh, here at CSO, we reach out to those community-based organizations, those college access programs, as well as the college prep charter schools, um, and, and as well as high schools, to get high school counselors and the, the points of contact that those other organizations to be our main leads uh, in getting and disseminating this information to the students that they're serving, and to also encourage them to sign up and use I'm First in their, in their search process. Uh, here at Center for Student Opportunity, we do con conduct our own grassroots level type of outreach. Uh, my, my colleague, her name is Chelsea, she manages all of the student support side and the relationship building for these high schools and community-based organizations and college access programs. And then as Matt mentioned earlier with the uh, College Knowledge Challenge Grant, we're given the ability uh, this year to really utilize that, that social network moving forward to help further reach students where they're at. 
And just to emphasize again, you know, what we're demoing right now at I'm First is, is still very much a beta site. Uh, we're working towards the national launch in, uh, in September, um, but at the same time, inviting uh, uh, users to sign up and, and to help us with the testing and, and to, to begin building this community. Um, you'll see we have about 1,200 students right now signed up on the site. Many of those have been migrated over from our older, uh, our old CSO College Center website, and we've just now started to open it up to new users uh, signing up, but at the same time, we're not aggressively um, marketing the site. Uh, we're inviting um, uh, new user sign up from, uh, from a group of community-based organizations that we work with, um, College Summit, which you might be familiar with, is a partner on the College Knowledge Challenge Grant, and so we're going to be doing some user testing uh, through them, and, and certainly building our community over these next few months, um, but uh, the national launch is happening in September. Uh, the, the grant is going to help uh, really raise some public awareness. Uh, we're looking to line up uh, some PR and media resources as well. And we're going to be asking our college partners to, to contribute to the effort, too, in, in helping us uh, spread the word and, and drive uh, awareness and participation. Um, so we've set an ambitious goal for this first year um, of, of engaging 50,000 students in our program. Um, it's ambitious, but, but we think realistic. Um, we know that these students are out there. Um, it's estimated that uh, that there are four and a half million first-generation college students currently enrolled in post-secondary institutions across the country. That's about 30% of, um, uh, of, uh, of the entire post-secondary population. Uh, so these students are out there. Um, you know, as a small organization with limited capacity, we have uh, our work cut out for us um, to, to reach and engage these students, uh, we know it's, it's a pretty competitive and cluttered marketplace, but we, we believe strongly that, that our unique focus on this student population and, and catering the experience uh, to the unique needs and interests of the first generation college student is going to win, um, is going to win some, some attention and, and goodwill. Uh, and, and the more uh, support we can have from colleges and universities uh, towards that end, uh, the stronger um, this, this joint effort will be. Great. Thank you, Matt. Uh, and in the interest of time, we are reaching the end of our presentation, but I'm uh, uh, receiving a few questions about clarification of uh, the contribution to become a college partner. Uh, uh, briefly, as Matt uh, showed, we have two levels of partnership. One's at the associate level and one's at the full partnership level. Uh, at the associate level, we ask for a recommended contribution of $1,500 for the year. Um, and at the full level partnership, we ask for a contribution of $2,800 for the year. Um, I put my contact information up, so uh, if you have further questions that we are unable to answer, please do not hesitate to field them over to me. Uh, my email is right there. It's just my first name, Krista, at imfirst.org. Uh, and I'll also be sure to follow up uh, in, a, in a separate email uh, at the conclusion of the presentation. So Great, we thank Krista. you all. Just to wrap up, we, we, we'd love to hear from you guys uh, to, to take a few minutes to answer your lingering questions as well as to learn more about your institutions and your efforts uh, in support of first-gen students. Um, so please uh, do, do contact Krista and we, we'd be happy to set up uh, separate phone conversations. Um, we hope that we have demonstrated uh, many of the intrinsic benefits and values of becoming uh, a CSO and I'm first uh, supporting partner. Um, at the same time, we believe strongly that, that a lot of this work is really predicated on, on the notion that a high tide raises all boats. And so uh, really we, we, we want to grow this effort to be a, a true clearinghouse program and to represent the array and the diversity of college opportunity that exists for first-generation college students. So from that perspective, too, we hope that you guys uh, will consider um, engaging your institution uh, in our partnership and, and taking advantage 
of, of our good work. Um, we, we very much look forward to hearing from you. Thank you all for attending.